Guys, I am extremely excited about today's video because I'm going to get to talk about something that I am extremely passionate about, the topic that I've spent quite some years working in. And I have a very personal journey around this. If you followed me and attended the lives, you're on IG, you'll know that this is something that my dad didn't start you know, thinking about until the age of 56, which is way too late to be thinking about in the picture of your life plan. And in my household, we never had a conversation of money. It was the only time that I remember a conversation of money because my dad was panicking. It's why I called this channel Conversation of Money. So that's how you know meaningful this topic is to me. And I hope at the end of this video to be able to transfer some of my enthusiasm through this camera to inspire you to take action. And I'll be asking you to take action at the end of this video and probably all the way throughout. So if I do get really animated and really, really excited, I do apologize if it's irritating to anybody, but trust me, this is something that I am really, really passionate about. And I hope that my passion transfers onto you. There's quite a lot to get through. You're gonna come onto my laptop. I'm gonna be talking you through, through some screens. You're gonna come onto my phone. I'm gonna be talking you through some investment fund sheets. There's a lot, so let's get going. So if you follow me on Instagram, on Monday, it was Pension Awareness Day. And I had a little bit of a theme on the account where through the day I posted stories with polls and questions and so on and so forth. And I did a live at the end of the day to talk about pensions specifically and try and get you guys to take action when it comes to that big boy planning, that future planning, that long-term mentality. And this week, it's a day, it was only a pension awareness day, but it tends to kind of like run through the week. So this week, Moneybox had done something amazing. Well, at least I think it's amazing and it is cause for excitement for me. They have just launched a pension tracking service. Now, I know, why am I getting excited about a pension tracking service? Let me tell you, the stats behind this are staggering, just amazing. Now, typically, the average person will work for about 11 employers through their career. And many of us, many of you watching this video will have worked for a company two or three years ago that you're no longer working for. And it is very, very likely that you paid into a pension with them and you're now at a new place and you have no idea what's going with that pension over there. And typically for some people, there's three, four, five pension pots that they had no idea about, that they, they know they paid money into, they don't know what they're worth, they don't know who's looking after them. It's just there in the ether somewhere. And naturally, when you change jobs, you change addresses, which compounds this problem even more, because not only do you not know who is, was running the pension from your previous employer, the people running the pension for your previous employer also don't know where you are because you've moved addresses and you've changed locations. So this kind of stuff all compounds itself. And here's a fun little fact for you. The estimated value of lost pension pots here in the UK is 19.4 billion pounds. Let's say that again, 19.4 billion pounds. That is a lot of money left on the table. That is a lot of coin. If I had 19.4 billion pounds, I probably wouldn't be doing this. I'd be on a yacht somewhere doing something completely different, enjoying life, living the high life. But it is a lot of money. That represents a lot of people who have left money on the table. This pension tracking service is essentially a service that allows you to pop in your first name, your last name, the name of your employer, and when you worked with them, and they will go and find these pots of money for you. It is so simple, but so, so essential. And you just have to ask, they're not the only people who have done this, but why have they not done this earlier? I know it takes some logistics and bits and pieces to really set this kind of stuff up, because it is complex work, but, better late than never. And I did do a review of Moneybox about four months ago. If you've not watched that video, go check it out. Come back and watch this. This will really give you a good understanding of Moneybox, their services. And if you're using them for your ICES, your ICES, this is something else that you can use them for that will help accumulate your wealth into one provider. So let's jump over to my laptop. I'm going to show you where you need to go on the Moneybox website to access this. I'm going to show you how simple it is. Trust me, guys, 
there is no excuse for you to have worked for two employers and for you not to use this to get your money together and to get your game right. There is no excuse. It is so simple. So let me just show you really quickly. So this is the Moneybox website. And for this, you need to go onto the investment tab. So what you're looking for is the pension provider search. You click on this and it takes you to this page and they give you a really brief breakdown of what this is all about. And yes, in aid of pension awareness live. Now you are going to be eligible to enter into a draw to win a thousand pounds between the 15th of September and the 9th of October. So guys, you need to get on this right now. It's going to be a win, win, win. And this is the form that you need to fill in. It is so simple. You need your first name, your last name, your email address, the name of your previous employer, the years in which you worked at this employee. You can add two additional employees as well. So total three. You can do this more than once if you needed to. I actually did this earlier today because I downloaded the app and got through the process. But in order to make sure that you are entered into the said £1,000 draw, you need to make sure that you've got this box ticked. If it isn't, you don't get entered into the draw. So you make sure that's ticked, you fill in your details, and you click submit. It is really that simple. There's a ton of FAQs on here. They've got terms and conditions, so please do give those a read. But it is very simple in terms of a process that takes you 30 seconds to two minutes to get done. I mean, it is an absolute no-brainer. The other thing that they're doing, which is really, really good, and they did this previously and they stopped it, but they're reintroducing it for a period of time, is if you transfer your pension over to them, they are also going to give you shares in Moneybox as well. So it's a win-win-win. You're going to get access to money that you may not even know is even there and is worth anything to get it invested to do better for you in the future. You're going to potentially get entered into a £1,000 draw and win a £1,000 and you're going to get shares in Moneybox. Now, I don't know whether there probably won't be preferential shares. We don't know how many shares you're going to get. But you're going to get shares in Moneybox. So it's a win, win, win. After you've completed this step, and I downloaded the Moneybox app earlier today because I am going to be transferring one of my recent pensions into this just to test the service and see what they're like. So once you've done this, you will need to go onto the app. And I should just say before we move over, move over to my phone, that you can only do this on their website for the next 30 days. I think technically it's about the next 24 days or so, 24, 25 days. After that, you can only access this service via the app. So one thing for you to bear in mind, just in case you haven't got the app just yet, but once you've completed that, you've already got terms and conditions and stuff, but you then need to go into app and you need to make your fund selection. So what I'm going to do right now is just go over to my phone. I'm going to access the, the app and I'm going to show you what you need to go through, some things that you need to bear in mind and some things that are going to be very, very important if you're invested in the markets. And this isn't just applicable for Moneybox. You should be paying attention to these things for anybody that you use. So I'm going to show you what I look at. I'm going to explain some terminology. I'm going to explain what wording means and hopefully give you that little push to do something about this. So, so once you've completed the steps on the website and you get into the app, you're going to be presented with this. And this is going to basically ask you to select your fund. So how you want your pension to be invested or how you want your money to be invested. So there are a couple of options on here and I'm going to talk you through, well, there's a few options. I'm going to talk you through all of them. So the first one you have is the BlackRock Life Path Retirement. You've got Old Mutual MSCI World ESG Index, and you've also got the Fidelity Index World. Now, I did a video next Tuesday explaining mutual funds, index funds, and ETF. If you've not watched that, go and watch that. Come back to this juncture of the video because it's really important that you understand what we mean by index when we get into looking at those two funds specifically. But let's have a look at BlackRock first and foremost. So one of the things you need to do is you need to select your investment time horizon. So for me, for my pension money, I'm not going to need it for about 25 years. Okay. So for me, I need to be going between 2043, 2045. I'm going to go next. Now, the idea of your investment timeline is 
the longer you have to invest money, you can technically afford to take more risk because you don't need the money for such a long time. So it makes sense that your money's working as hard as it possibly can for you whilst it's invested. You get a really nice video from BlackRock explaining what the fund is all about. You've got a fund overview here, which is the, just a couple of paragraphs. These funds invest your money differently as you go through life, moving from higher growth assets such as shares and property through to safer investments such as bonds as you get older. We call this lifestyle in the industry. It's a very well-known principle. And the idea is that because I'm only investing um, my pension and I don't need it for 25 years, they're going to take as much risk with it as possible in the early years. So from here on out, the minute I start getting to maybe five years to my, my retirement date, it will start taking less risk and start putting it into safer assets like bonds. A lot of the stuff that I'm going to reference when we get into the fund information, the fund fact sheets, there will be terminology. And I'm going to break some of that terminology down. But the terminology that I'm going to reference to and going to you know, talk about here, I've covered in my investment course. If you've not taken it, I strongly recommend you take it. It's going to give you the foundation that you need as a first time investor. It's $99.99. It's not $999. It's not $500. It's £99. Pounds. 99 pence. Fifth, four chapters, 15 lessons. You can get through it in 96 minutes. There are tests, there are assessments, there are downloadables in there. You get lifetime access and you also get free updates when I update the modules as well. So it's a very worthwhile investment, but taking that course will give you a foundation and make some of the stuff that we are going to talk about completely make sense. But I'm going to try and break it down as much as I possibly can now. I'm just very, very mindful of time. So here we go. So fun fees. 0.21%. Now, this is the fee that BlackRock charged to manage the investment. This does not include the fees for Moneybox. Moneybox, I believe, charged 0.4 or 0.45. So you need to add that to the 0.21% that you're seeing here. Now, let's jump into fund information. This is a fund fact sheet. It's a BlackRock one. Each of them will look different because you've got BlackRock, Old Mutual, and you've got Fidelity. So they will look different, but they should typically present roughly about the same information what the fund is is designed to do and some performance now this is really really important whether you're using moneybox or wealthify or nutmeg or hargreaves lansdowne vanguard fidelity you need to pay particular attention to the fund fact sheet because it tells you what the fund is 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 tasked to do so with this one it's telling you the fund objective is to provide retirement retirement funds with an asset allocation that changes over time the fund will gain exposure to global equities, fixed income instruments, property and commodities, and may also invest in other permitted assets. So there's a little bit of terminology in there. Asset allocation. Again, I cover that in the course. Asset allocation is how your money is invested, how your money is divided across different asset classes. Asset classes are described as baskets. So equities, bonds, property, they are all asset classes. And it also talks about, you know, fixed income. Fixed income is also called or can be called bonds. So fixed income, bonds are exactly the same thing. Again, in the investment course, I cover all of this. You can Google these things, guys, and read what they are on, on Investopedia and a number of other sources. But if you want a coherent place to make everything make sense, the course will definitely help you. So it gives you an overview of what the fund is tasked to perform or, or achieve for you. Then you've got some performance. So this is 12-month performance um, period up to the last quarter. And they will always try and keep these up to date to the last quarter. And this gives you an idea of how their fund has performed, performed against a benchmark. Now, a benchmark is some, a fund of similar makeup that they use to benchmark whether they're performing well or not. So in this example, let's have a look at how they've done between, uh, let's say, June 2016 and June 2017. The fund has done 16.64%. The benchmark did 16.83%. Now, I wouldn't be too stressed out or too concerned if the bench, the performance against the benchmark is 0.2% less, right? Obviously, they want to beat the benchmark, but the benchmark is a benchmark. It's a measure of where they aim to perform at. So unless they're 10%, 5% off, I wouldn't be too concerned. Yes, sometimes the performance is higher than the benchmark. So you can see that in 15 to 16, 2.46, the benchmark was 2.29. That's good but you don't really want them down against their benchmark too significantly. 
unless there are some crazy circumstances in terms of something that's happened with the market. Now, this is good because it gives you a snapshot of historic performance. However, historic performance is no indication to future performance. So you need to take this with a pinch of salt. What it does do, though, it gives you an idea of how they performed in the past. So if I see any specific periods of poor performance, I'll be looking to see what happened in the markets at that period of time. How did they perform against the wider market? So if the FTSE 100 had fallen 20% and most funds had fallen 20%, I'll be looking to see how much they lost in context to the market conditions. So if the FTSE 100 fell 20%, they fell 10%, I'll probably say they didn't do too bad. They probably have some really good risk management in there. So you get this information in a table like this. You've also got them in bars. Now, one thing that they provide that is really, really good, which speaks to diversification, and I've got a couple of videos on diversification. You can watch that one right there. Um, and again, in the course I referenced this, it's really important that you get diversified across sectors, across different industries, across different geographical regions. Here they break them down. So you can see they've got information technology, healthcare, they've got industrial, real estate, materials, energy. And it tells you that in financials, for example, which will be banks and investment houses, 12.06% of your money will be invested in that sector. And 13.57% will be invested in IT, information technology, right? This is really, really important stuff because you want to know where your money is invested. It also breaks down where you're invested geographically. Now, no surprise, the United States is the biggest market on the planet. That's where most of the tech giants are, are situated. So you've got a heavy weighting to the United States, to the American markets. The fund invests 40.56%. The benchmark that they're comparing to has more exposure to the United States, followed by UK, Ireland, Japan. This is really, really important because diversification helps you manage risk. So that's the first one. That's with BlackRock. I'm not going to select that one. I'm going to make my choice offline. But let's go and have a look at the old mutual fund. Now, this is an ESG fund. And ESG stands for Environmental, Social, and Governance. So essentially, they have an ethical stance on their investment proposition or their investment ideology, i.e. they are not going to invest in companies that do not have an ethical, social, or governance policy within their company ethos. This is all about pushing companies to do better with money by using money as a leverage to force these companies to do better. You've got a video from a guy at Old Mutual. Note, with this one, it is slightly more expensive, 0.23. And the reason for that is to do this work to vet companies, to make sure that they don't have companies within the investment fund that breach any of their investment ideology, that takes extra resource. So you are paying the extra fee for the extra expertise that goes into this. So the fund overview, the fund invests in a range of companies from across developed global stock markets. So developed global stock markets. This is not going to be the United States exclusively. This will be developed global stock markets. But considers environmental, social, and governance factors in its selection process. These factors include like how companies respond to climate change, a big issue right now, how they treat their workers and manage their supply chains. All very important stuff. So if you are of the, of the persuasion that you want to invest ethically, this will be the fund for you. But just be mindful you're going to pay a little bit more in terms of cost. But let's have a look at the fund information. This one will look differently to the BlackRock one because they present information differently. But the core of it is you want to get an understanding of what the fund is designed to do. So on the objectives, you can see here, the fund aims to achieve long-term growth on your investment. To achieve this objective, the fund will invest in the equities of companies in developed markets, which are included in the MSCI World ESG Index. So this is an index, which means that it's going to be passively managed. And again, if you've not watched last Tuesday's video where I talk about mutual funds, index funds, and ETFs, you need to go watch that to know what we're talking about here. So it's going to be tracking an index. It's going to be managed passively, at least. Um, the fund will, in the will invest in at least 80% of its assets in equity securities listed and or traded on regulated markets in developed markets worldwide. So they're taking a high level of risk here, basically, with this. And you can see that reflected in the risk and reward profile down here. They score on a basis of one to seven. This is classed as a six out of seven. So really, really important to bear that in mind. Um, 
and again, when you're when you're looking at this, you need to take into consideration the context of your own circumstances. So, for example, for me, I'm not going to be invest. I'm not going to be retiring until you know 25 years. I've got a long, long time. So it makes sense for my money to be invested in maybe something like this that takes a little bit more risk to ensure that my money is working harder for me. With that, you need to acknowledge the flip side. With more risk that you take, yes, you can get better returns, but you could also lose money. But in the scheme of your investment timeline, and again, I talk about this on the investment course, your timeline is crucial when it comes to investing. I'm investing for 25 years. I can afford to take more risk, or so logic will dictate. However, if I was only investing for five years, I would never take that level of risk because it is too high for my investment timeline. So that's really worthwhile bearing in mind, guys. They don't really give you much information in terms of your split, in terms of geography and sectors on this one, but they do give you a little bit of performance. They haven't got a long track record with this fund, but you can see that the fund has performed at 22.7 versus the benchmark at 22.9. So a little bit behind the benchmark, not really a huge cause for concern. Now let's talk about the last option that they have available, which is the Fidelity Index World. Now, again, there's a breakdown here. The fund offers low cost diversified exposure to developed global stock markets. So that will be the US, the UK developed economies. It invests in more than 1,600 companies across 23 countries. 23 countries. So very, very well diversified. Lots of sectors, lots of companies lots of countries. You'll probably interact with many of these companies every day, like Amazon, Facebook, Netflix. With your risk spread globally, you haven't got all your eggs in one basket. And that's the whole point of diversification. That's the whole point. With this one, you'll see it's cheaper, 0.12. So if you're investing, this is why I say cost isn't always the end or be all. If you're investing, it depends on your, your preference, you, whether you've got an ESG start. If you have, you might feel okay with paying a little bit more. Now, let's have a look at the fund sheet. It's going to look differently. With this one, what they're essentially saying is the fund aims to track the performance before fees and expenses are applied. And of the MSCI World Net Total Return Index, that's net total return. So after all of, fee, of the fees involved in the investment process, thereby seeking to increase the value of your investments over five years or more. The fund uses an index tracking, so passive investment approach. Again, go watch that video. It explains exactly what that is. Essentially, a tracker basically mimics the performance of an index. So for example, if you have an index fund tracking the FTSE 100, whatever the FTSE 100 does is exactly what you're seeing your index fund. It is going to track the performance. It's passive, it's not actively managed. Now with this one on the risk profile, they also score a seven, but this one is a five. So again, it's all about making sure that you understand how does that relate to your personal context in terms of what you're going through, your circumstance, your investment time horizon, the risk that you're able and willing to take. Two different things, able and willing to take. You may be willing to take risk at, eight, at, at seven, but if you're only able because of emergency funds and so on and so forth, you may only be able to take a risk at a level three, which will mean that this particular fund may not suit you. But there's a lot to go into this, guys. I do cover a lot of this in the investment course. I'm very, very conscious of time. I'm going to come out of this. But my final thoughts are this. Guys, this is a great thing. If you've worked for previous employers and you don't know whether you've paid into a pension or you know you paid into a pension, but you don't know who it's with, this is the way for you to get your hands on that money. And it will take you literally... 30 seconds to two minutes to do. It isn't a huge effort. Definitely do this. There is no excuse whatsoever. And it's a win, win, win. Not only are you getting access to money that you've probably forgotten about, you'll be entered into a draw to win a thousand pounds. You're also going to get shares in money. I mean, I don't know how much more they have to offer you to get your acts all together and make sure you've got your ducks in a row and get your game time. This is a win, win. So guys, conscious of time, Thank you so much for watching this. I've referenced a lot here. If you have any questions at all, let me know in the comments below. Are you using Moneybox? Have you got with money with them in your ISA? Do you see this as a good thing? Do you plan on doing this? Let me know in the comments below. If you've not listened to the podcast, there it is right there. That's the artwork. Go check it out. But guys, have an amazing weekend. I'll speak to you on Tuesday.